All right, what's going on everyone? We're back at the shop on a Saturday. We got Purdy's Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Uh, he calls it the Mustang, but it's pretty sick. It's got a Toyota 1JZ VVTi engine swapped in it. And uh, he's been slowly picking away on this bad boy, upgrading it in one of our last videos. I modified the manifold for this nice new PSR turbo and it's got this little T51R mod should make some very cool sounds. So our job is to start mocking some stuff up. Uh, he brought it to me last weekend and I just wrote down my game plan because we need to measure out a bunch of stuff, get some couplers. Still waiting on a couple more parts for it. Again, Canada kind of sucks for that. You can't get everything when you want it unless you want to pay an arm and a leg and we don't want to do that. So we don't mind waiting a week to not get rinsed on some parts. So yeah, today we're gonna to be playing with a little elbow that I'll pull up on the table, show you guys. That's what I really like to put on turbo housings. I'm gonna fully remove this turbo housing off, cut this little barb fitting off or leave it on depending, probably cut it off though. Uh, just saws all that off real quick and then we're gonna weld our cast 90 elbow to it and it really helps keep all the heat away from where we're gonna put the coupler on, which is just gonna be like a nice, two and a half inch coupler straight, right to the old intercooler piece that was in there. Other side, it's fine, <laughs> we don't need to deal with it. So on the list, we have hot side intercooler piping, air intake, he's already figured out his turbo drain. Then we gotta start making the down pipe and connect it back to the existing exhaust system that's on it. That also got damaged last year, so we're gonna cut out the section that he hastily fixed at the track. There's a bunch of goopy welds on, which is fine, you'll get that got to do what you got to do in the moment, right? So get all that out of there and uh, freshen it up, tuck it up as much as we can. And we're just going to run you guys through all the different processes. We're going to be playing with some aluminum. We're going to be playing with some stainless. And uh, yeah, I'll probably show you a little, again, talk tips and tricks of uh, the different settings that I use and uh, kind of how I approach fabricating all the things on it. So uh, other than that, let's get to it. We got our Vibrant Performance two and a half inch cast elbow, part number 2873. Uh, this is my Frank's Red Hot. I put this pretty much on every single turbo application that I play with. The main key purpose of this is it keeps the coupler or whatever connection point you want to use away from the tubular manifold. That's usually the main reasoning behind it. Uh, it's usually when you're going to like a bigger single like this, like an upgraded single. Um, we use them on intercoolers and stuff too. I've seen them commonly used. You can, again, you can put this on whatever you want. It's a pretty universal piece. Uh, the turbo housings are cast and they, I like to kind of go with the same kind of component tree, right? So if you have a cast housing, you kind of want to put a cast elbow on it. Uh, it's just kind of goes hand in hand, in my personal opinion. You can put a tube on there too. I have done it in the past and it does work, but now you have a thinner clamping surface. When you're using like the T-bolt clamps over and over, it is nice to have a nice solid, solid surface for it. So we're gonna unpackage this bad boy. We're gonna bring it on over to uh, the Moose steak, the 1J, and clock the new PSR turbo, line up this elbow and kind of have it pointing where the inner, cause it's a mid-mounted intercooler, uh, similar to what I'm making on the 240 at the shop. This is just already there. So again, the one cold sides, Done, it's on there, we're not changing that, we're just getting this set up going with the new turbo on it. So we'll clock this, point it towards the new position, I'll put some little sharpie marks on it, then I'll pull the actual turbo housing off of the turbo, saws all that bitch, whatever. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we'll just keep going with it, dude. Uh, we're just gonna start making some stuff, cutting up some brand new parts, which is a thing that we do a lot. You buy something brand new, doesn't fit the way you want it, so you got slice it and dice it. So let's keep rocking. So we're just gonna start on doing the housing now. And uh, I always like to put the turbo and oil line on a little bit of an angle. We're still waiting on some fittings to fix, you know, this big, big swirly top line. Kinda need a 90 degree fitting off the turbo charger, in my opinion. Vibrant makes a nice little swivel adapter that I usually like to use. 
comes in like a bunch of different MPTs. Our line's kind of restricting us right now on the bottom just because of how it's kind of laid out there. Um, we can loosen it. It's already kind of loose. <laughs> drove here. No, not drove here. Drove off the trailer. But we're, we're hand tight right now. So we can just kind of loosen this a bit, swivel it around, push it where we want it. Again, he's going to have to change his drain line. Uh, this is just stuff that he stole off of our boy Rhett's car because Rhett's car is all in shambles right now. So just using this for mock-up. So that's as far as I can get the center housing over. It's not a big deal because everything kind of moves. That's why I wear a shoelace. That's why I've always worn shoelaces. Just try not to like scratch. You know when you have a belt buckle or a button on your pants, you kind of scratch something when you're working on it. So what do you do now? You're just taping up. I'm just taping up this blanket to uh, protect all my buddy Steve's hard labor that he's put into polishing this paint <laughs> that came with the car. He put a lot of, like, too much work into polishing it. <laughs> Blanket's a little thick, but painter's table holder kind of in place. That one over there works the best. I can just, like, shove more in here, too. It's no big deal. Again, just so I'm not dragging. Dragging my, I should take my knife off, but it'll be fine. Dragging all my stuff against it, you know? Dragging your junk against it, man. You don't want to be dragging your junk all against your buddy's car. It's not nice. So yeah, we're going to clock this housing now that we got our protection set up. Now we can uh, put her where we want. So we're going to get her a little Sharpie roll ready there. Again, I think Matt took some B-roll of the bay. You can kind of see where this coupler is sitting over here. So we're just lining up generally straight from there. Might need like a little S bend in the pipe, but honestly should be able to get away with it pretty good. So I'm just gonna kind of point this in a direction that looks good for me that I'm happy with. Something like that's pretty decent. Come straight, little kick in. Turbo still looks good. Logo's there. Lots of room for activities, right dude? Oh yeah. A little bit of a <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna rock that. So we're just gonna take our Sharpie, do two little marks, two, three, four, you can do however much you want. Honestly, it's all your personal preference. Just don't do five though, right? You know what, dude? You can do whatever you want. You can do six to nine if you wanted. I'm not gonna. That's a good ratio, six yeah, to nine. You can have six to nine marks on this thing. I'm not gonna judge you. As long as you put it where you can want it. <laughs> That's all that matters. So I'm just gonna put two. I'm gonna trim it and stuff, and I, I just always double, triple, check. Measure twice, cut once. Cut twice, measure once. Yeah, Something that's like that. what I thought it was. Whatever. Safety third. But yeah, we'll uh, pull this all the way off now and uh, keep a little tabs aside. I find that race cars are great because there's always good tool holders. Like, look at this rad. Like, that's awesome. You can put your wrench ratchet you can put your bolts in there like it's pretty pretty convenient new cars with all their plastic and stuff you know where to put your hardware you don't want that we don't need that energy man little tabs that hold the housing on just keep everything together i'm organized chaos some people will like bag and tag everything i do when i pull like an engine apart if i'm like which we'll go through on Trevor's LS, which I got at the shop. We cleaned it up a little bit, pulled the valve covers off. I put some fittings on it and uh, we got my little, my little lunch table set up. And then that's what I can like Sharpie on and put plastic down. When we start pulling apart all the lifters and stuff, organize everything in the order that it came off. But for majority of stuff, you can just like, if you can't figure out where that stuff goes after taking that off, <laughs> gonna, need, <laughs> gonna need some assistance. <laughs> Billet baby. Those are super nice V-man housing, so that's what I would just weld that adapter straight to the manifold because it's a cheap manifold and Purdy was like, I don't want to fucking deal with any gaskets. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> nobody likes gaskets. This comes with a nice, I don't know if I'm too close, but has a, it's called a T51R mod and it's this little housing. They like machine this and they put this insert in. Well, I like that. So it like adds this like, 
another Corolla, like the other Corolla that I'm literally doing after this one. Another Corolla is coming here with the new Garrett version of this with an Artec manifold that I gotta do all the same stuff on it, as well as cut out the trunk and uh, mount a fuel cell in. But yeah, we're getting a lot of playing with nice new expensive parts that people give me and they're like, yeah, make it work. And I just <laughs> cut it all up into pieces. A little bad boy off of there. Not bad, pretty straight cut. I'm just gonna clean up the inside. <sighs> got some crud in here. This thing was all oily, so what I do is I'm just gonna smooth it up a little bit. I got a little, couple little options here. Um, yeah, clean that all up, clean it all up in the sink, get all the metal out of there, <sighs> blow it all off, and then we're going to bring it back in the car, double check that I'm still happy with the marks, and then we can start uh, welding some elbows to some cast housings. Again, that prep work is everything. You just want to make sure everything's clean. And other than that, keep rocking. This also isn't the exact bit I would use with aluminum, but we're just going quick, just to get all those quick burrs out. And then this one's just to clean up that surface. We're not even welding to the surface, we're welding to this cast, but like even though it's underneath it, might as well make it clean. So right now we're sitting at the fab bench. We got our aluminum pieces here. Obviously I gotta set up my welder for aluminum welding now. With a TIG welder, you can do aluminum, stainless, mild steel, you can weld titanium, you can do a majority of exotic metals. The main difference is you have DC welding and AC welding. So this setup that's on it right now, this is the rainbow maker, the trout layer. This is how you get the salmons stacked on the tubes, okay? Um, this is M for cups. He, the guy kills it. Uh, he's, again, been making me and my buddies look like we know what we're doing for many years now. I can kind of show you the pieces that make these setups. They, they're joined of a couple different things. They come in a lot of different sizes. But in general, you have your tungsten rod, which sits in a collet. The collet is what connects into your gas lens here. The gas lens is just one piece of the salmon stacking. Like you need, you need multiple, multiple equations lined up so that you can get the most sassy salmon stacked on your tubes. So you have your first call at lens, which this is like a CK worldwide. And FERC makes his own. I gotta get a new setup. This stuff lasts a long time. As long as you don't abuse it, these acrylic cups, uh, they, yeah, they're acrylic, Pyrex, whatever the hell they are. There's glass ones, and then there's these Pyrex, Pyrex ceramic, whatever. Lots of options. Glass is more fragile than this at the end of the day. These have this nice little gas lens. Can you see that, Matt, on the screen? Can you see that gas lens that's in there? Hold on. Yep. So again, that's what gives you nice gas coverage. You have these all stacked together on the torch. You're usually running 30 CFM to 40 CFM, which is again, your post flow, uh, the, the flow out of the bottle. So that is a DC welding setup. We don't want to weld DC because you can't weld aluminum with DC. We need to go to AC. And there's a couple different ways of doing it. Lots of guys have different opinions and options on it. It's whatever you find most comfortable. This is the classic kind of setup, which is the original copper call it which isn't really a gas lens in Oshawa at my shop down there. I have uh, a, one of these gas lenses, these traditional ones that are just really beat up and I use that for aluminum. Um, I get great results with both. This is a setup that I got from Canada Welding Supply with all the Emferic stuff that I just use at home. This is my home, home TIG welding kit. So I just use the ones that came with it and I get great results with this still. So this, that's what we're rocking with today. When we're tossing this in, usually you wanna take off your little back lens here, that plastic cap, just so that everything sits better on it. There we go. Put it back in your kit. You have your one piece that spins in. Again, you have another collet on the end here. I really need to clean this, but I usually sharpen both sides. So now I have the other side that's ready to rock. So then that saves me a little bit of a process. So just flip her. Give me in. There we go. That's the magic, Matt. Flip it. Spin this bad boy in, 
And obviously you can see there's a large size difference between them because they're very different applications. For the aluminum welding, you don't need a lot of gas coverage. Uh, the, the torch is usually set up 15, 20 ish, depending on what size cup I'm using. This is a tiny cup. This is called like a number five. This is very tiny. Again, you can still use this setup on it. I would just honestly not use anything that has like an actual gas lens in it. That's when you go to like an eight or a five, which has just a, an open face nozzle. And again, you can still use this gas lens screen with this cup. And you can weld a little bit with that. A lot of guys do it. There's a guy I watch on YouTube. He uses this Everlast, does a lot of really good informational TIG welding videos and he stacks dimes, dude. Some guys are insane, robotic. But yeah, we're set up now. We're ready to do some aluminum. Usually I grab a piece of scrap metal or something like that. This stuff's thick. I'm probably gonna be welding at like 125, 130 amps. See how that strikes on it, get my first time, clean it all up again, and then we'll start silver salmon stacking, I guess. Is there silver salmons, Matt? Is there well, silver salmon? Well, I mean, like, yeah. Well, I think what, so. That's what we're doing. There's no rainbow trouts yeah. right now, right? Yeah. Later, we'll get to the trouts. The salmon stacking and the trout laying. But for right now, we're gonna, we got our aluminum setup set up. We're gonna change the machine over to AC. Again, if you guys have any questions about welding and information about TIG welding and different setups and stuff like that, I'm more than happy to help because I've just learned from other people who've been willing to help me through the years. Um, other than that, let's party. Oh, yeah. in the car, got our new elbow on there. So this gets the coupler away from all these tubes. Nice T-bolt clamp can go on here, hold that nice and tight. Lots of meat in there so it can still seal onto it. You know, make sure you get a nice nice surface. This is the old pipe that was on here. Uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. We're uh, reusing this for Steve and just making everything work. I think last time, I don't, I don't think I didn't modify this one last time. Might have, I don't know. Who knows? Um, <laughs> we're gonna end up cutting this, putting it in the little section that it was before. And I don't have a bead roller here, but once I done, finish this, I can bring the pipe with me to the shop on Monday and bead roll the other end that goes into here. But in general, um, I can reuse this one section and then just add a straight section to make up the gap. And it's a very simple, straightforward intercooler pipe. And then we can move on to cutting off that section of broken exhaust and downpipe wastegate tube. So I'll bring, mark this just quickly there. Again, it's pretty straightforward. This is cut on a janky angle. That's what makes me think that I didn't do it. <laughs> so I wouldn't do that. It's cut on like a 15 degree to make this like fit in there. It's kind of funky, but cut that off, clean that up. Scotch bright at all, make it look, like, look, look at this tube right now. You won't even recognize this thing when I'm done with it, all right, dude? What, what tarnation? It's a shitty little bandsaw, but it works good. It usually works good. <laughs> Into the used pile you go. Rainy day fun. I'll fucking zoom it over here. Will it make it? Yep. All right, dude, we're back. 
We got our little tube all cleaned up there, scotch brighted it, recycled it, made it look brand new. I do have this section, uh, Matt and I lined it up in there. This was just short of it. Otherwise, I would have just put a whole branding tube in there, but that's the length that I have here. So we're just going to now make a small section and then I'll be have some leftovers. Nothing wrong with some leftovers. So we're just gonna go inside here. You feel where it stops on the coupler. Woo! on the cast piece, sorry. And we're gonna measure out where we are. We have a little bit of room. This this housing can still move over. Like I have a lot of bit of uh, I'm gonna swear anyway. I call it room. <laughs> All the time, that's what I call it. I like to leave a little bit of fuck room. Um, play room is what I'm gonna work to say a lot harder. But in general, you want some play room so then you can get everything all dialed in how you want it. Sorry, Matt, more editing for you, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Obviously, there's a little bit of an angle. We could cut an angle into the pipe to kind of make it line up with it, but I honestly think I can loosen these nuts, sneak it over just a little bit more, and we should be fine to just rock a straight section. So again, go back in. I have this one pushed in the coupler as, as much as I want. We don't want blowing off couplers. And we are pretty much like dead on 15 inch at the housing. I usually take off a quarter, three eighths, so even half because we got again we're really close to the lip in there and you want room to move the pipe in and out so we can go 14 and a half 14 and a quarter our longer pipe that we have here is 14 and a half 14 it's pretty much 14 and a half so we can even just try and shove this whole one in but i think we're going to get into the scenario where i said we still need to trim a little bit of tube i'm just losing my blanket then because it's gonna be touching on the housing and this is already pushed in pretty far. So I'm probably just gonna cut this to that 14. It can lay down. It's all gonna line up nice and straight, just like that. That's pretty much just gonna be a straight piece of tube and I'll brush this to match. I like brush tubing, polished is nice, but I'm just a big, big brush finish guy. It's just what I like. You're allowed to like different things. Oh my. Now it's definitely getting brushed. Perfect. <laughs> You don't want to go too hard. You don't want to break the tube, but you want it tight. So you give it a little wiggle. Make sure that it's good. And I always go backwards when I go on the inside. And then put this on a low speed. Yeah, so I'm not the best at aluminum welding. I'm okay with it, but I can make stuff not leak. <laughs> That's pretty sick. But yeah, I'm always always sitting there thinking about like where I can improve with it. Same with stainless too, but I'm always a lot happier with how I can do on stainless. New tool coming will uh, hopefully make results in this a little bit better, but Tons of dimes, that's more silver compared to the other one as I was showing you before. The cast always has like the green, greens to it. For this, you're always gonna have a cleaner silver stack to it. The white is the cleaning and etching of the balance. It's always hard to get rid of that. But that's why I like the brush too, because once this cools down, I can brush over the weld, gets rid of all that has, and then it all just kind of blends in. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'll cool, let this cool, hit it with scotch bright again, put it in the car. Check. Looks regular, you know. High quality content. You always polish your tubes at that angle, Mike? Always, dude. Lots of experience. Years. It's new tube for you, buddy. This is just a used coupler I had sitting in the back of the M3 too. We can definitely get you a new one if you want. Just like that. Boom. Yeah, that looks good. Now we just gotta rotate it so that the best weld is facing up. Oh, I think we were already there, buddy. Good, we're golden. All right, dude. So that pretty much wraps it up for uh, welding an elbow to a turbo and making a super simple charge pipe for the old Mustang here. Uh, again, on to the next one now. We're gonna be playing with the down pipe and the dump tube on the next one. Go through the processes on that, cut off the exhaust where it kind of got hurt and uh, 
just keep going and get this all done so Purdy can get ready for the spring season coming up because it's coming up fast. If you guys wanna, again, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll check you guys on the next one.